you can just over here. go see. The camera. Like right here. Oh, right here. Where are we supposed to be? You'll be right where you want to be. You're well, fine. You You're yeah. fine, Lida. Sure, go right ahead. Okay, I'm live along. I'm going to give a talk on the anatomy of the neck, head, as it applies to martial arts. And this is my human guinea pig, David. Okay. Okay. Basically, what we're concerned with in choking, and that sort of thing, is the anterior cervical triangle. Cervix in Latin just means neck. So this is the cervix of the body, and the cervix uteri is what people often think of when you mention cervix. Okay, the anterior cervical triangle runs from the mastoid process just below, behind the ear, along the sternocleidomastoid muscle down to the bump of the collarbone, basically, on both sides. And the trachea runs along here. Here's the larynx. <clears throat> the larynx is very easily fractured. I think it's something like 10 or 12 pounds of force that it takes to fracture the larynx. I'm not sure. Then you have, well, this is actually the out of some mandibular triangle there, but here's the boundary of the anterior cervical triangle. Okay, now running, taking off from the um, aorta about there, is, and running up the neck between the trachea and deep to the uh, sternocleidomastoid muscle is the carotid artery. Somewhere about there, usually. It splits into the internal carotid, which goes up and supplies the brain, and the external carotid, which supplies the scalp and associated muscles and the meninges of the brain. And what we're most concerned with is the internal carotid, and usually on the left is the carotid sinus, which is where the internal carotid and the external carotid split, almost always on the left, um, except, of course, there are some individuals who just don't follow the rules. And so it's always a good excuse. If it doesn't work, it's because they were weird. <laughs> <laughs> Their carotid size was on the right. There are some people whose organs are completely switched where their uh, liver will be on the left, the spleen will be on the right, and the heart will be shifted and pointed in the wrong direction. And that's just because we're imperfect beings. Okay, so the other thing about you, the big problem is the sternocleidomastoid muscle because it can get in your way. Now it contracts as you should turn your, your head away from it. So in other words, if you turn your head against, I don't know how, how good the camera is, but turn your head against my hand. Against. That, that's right, against it. And that should, nope, oh, that's making this one too crash. I keep getting confused as to which way it goes. Turn, it, turn your head this way. There you go. Showing up at all, probably not. Rotate 90 degrees. There you go. Okay. Rotate 90 degrees. Yeah. No. No, I was just going to get That's behind. good. That's good so right that there. Could, That's perfect right there. Could avoid getting in the way. Okay, now turn your head. Hard. Excellent. Should. And also, it comes into some degree when you flex. Okay. If you put too much pressure on the carotid sinus, you will slow the heart down. Uh, also, if you massage the eyeballs, you can slow the 
<laughs> and uh, you can overdo this, and it's quite possible you might need to call the paramedics, but, <laughs> but under most circumstances. Okay, so basically you put pressure on the carotid side. That probably not to do this, or if you, <laughs> or if you occlude the, the, um, or if you put too much pressure on the carotid artery, cutting off the blood supply to the brain, uh, you could choke somebody out. Now there's, there are safety mechanisms involved. That usually, uh, there's cross connections, collateral circulation. There's a circle of blood vessels at the bottom of the brain called the circle of Willis. It's fed by both carotid arteries and both vertebral arteries. They're supposed to cross communicate and give you a safety mechanism. And it usually does. But as I said, we're imperfect beings and sometimes it doesn't quite work out. Okay, now, any, any questions? I think I pretty much covered the basics. Yes? Are you saying that the internal carotid on most people only comes off of one side? No, there, there, is, there are two internal carotids, the right and the left. Both of them split into an internal and an external carotid artery. But the carotid sinus, which is uh, supplied by the vagus nerve, is usually on the left, almost always on the left. So there is only one side that you One carotid sinus. Always on the left, except when it's not. Then <laughs> <laughs> it's on the right. Then it's on the right. And the alternative is the eyeballs, mm -hmm. which uh, will also stimulate the so right. what am I feeling here is right behind the throat. Is that the external carotid? Um, it's either the external <clears throat> or the internal. Okay. Or maybe both. Some of the, the level of the split varies widely between individuals from way down almost at the beginning of the carotid artery to way up almost at the mm -hmm. jawbone. And the only real way to be sure exactly where it is in any individual is to do an angiogram, which is not practical in the dojo. <laughs> How long do you have to cut the blood supply to, to knock them out? Until it does. <laughs> Usually. That long. Well, the problem is you've got all this cross circulation. So you really can't be sure how long it, it uh, would take. I bet the Judo people in here would have a much better practical um, estimate than I do. Mm -hmm. How long does it take? In the explosive application that stimulates not only the sinus but also the vagus, it's uh -huh. it's about like that. About like that. Well, that's mostly because of the vagal stimulation. It's probably the nerve stimulation at that point. Oh. In terms of blood supply, it, it's uh, those but take a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah. take a little longer, maybe a minute. Mm -hmm. When the heart rate drops, how long does that, does that uh, effect last? And what do you, and in other words, you say when you push on the carotid sinus, the heart rate goes down. Right. How long does that effect last? And is it only for the duration of the pressure, or does it immediately come back and release it? Well, you hope it immediately comes back. <laughs> <laughs> One would think that's why I meant. Okay. Uh, you hope so, and usually it comes back very quickly. Uh, Again, except when it doesn't. Not my heart rate, not, not consciousness. No. I, I realize that. Okay. There are, if you overdo the vagal stimulation, under some circumstances, in some people, you can actually cause cardiac arrest. Mm -hmm. That's slowing it down way too much. Mm -hmm. There is some risk involved. It's not. Really, is it? but you have to mention the risks so people will be aware of it. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful anatomy. Thank you. Thank you, Lila Long.
Bravo. All right. So.